Hello and welcome to the Scholar Progenium. Today I'm going to be talking to you about tactical terminators and how to use them effectively in your games of 40k. Now, tactical terminators are a really cool unit. You know, they're really iconic in the 40k universe from the Battle of Macrage when the ultramarines were fighting in the polar fortresses uh, and they stood and fought against the Tyranids, against High Fleet Bearmoth. To, and uh, died to the and fought to the last man, um, to you know just endless imagery in all of the artwork in all of the big rule books going back through multiple editions, uh, and just in all loads of battlefields and in loads of armies, you know they're a classic uh, set of models that loads of us have and loads of us own and love and want to use in our battles. But you know often we find that. There's other units out there, other units in the codex that are just, you know, have a little bit more punch or a little bit cooler or nastier. Uh, so these guys get left uh, in the box or on the shelf. But uh, that is a shame. You know, we want to be able to use these units more effectively uh, and make sure that we're getting the most out of them so that we're not feeling like when we take them in a list, uh, we're making that list subpar. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to teach you about how you can use tactical terminators very effectively to get the most out of them so they're an efficient part of your battle, uh, your army, uh, and not a sort of hole in your army list. So you can use them effectively and still win games of 40k. I'm not saying that they're an auto include, I'm saying if you want to use them, you can use them effectively. So without further ado, I'll uh, get on to the video, and as usual, I'll break it down into uh, some smaller categories and then go into those categories in more detail. Uh, so the first category I'll go into is uh, sort of the multitude of uses that the tactical terminators have and their sort of strengths and weaknesses in general. And then I'll go into sort of two main uses and deployments and strategies to use with the tactical terminators in your army so that uh, you get the most out of them. Uh, so Let's get straight into it with uh, the variety of uses uh, that these tactical terminators can have and their sort of general pros and cons. So the first thing you need to understand about tactical terminators is their disadvantages. And the disadvantages are that they are not as tough as haminators as, uh, because they don't have the storm shields. So they haven't got that three up invun. They've only got a five up invun normally. Now, obviously, you've got different variations of terminators. Uh, with a variety of uh, different modes, and you may own different types, but I'm just going to be talking about general terminators today, and you'll you know you'll just have to adapt your tactics to the specific models or type of terminators that you use in your list, because this all generally works for all of them. That the stuff that I'm about to discuss, uh, but the disadvantage is that basically you can't do what you used to be able to do and just deep strike them in on a flank and let them take care of business because uh, they just unsupported will not be able to achieve that goal and they will just bounce off the enemy and you know get destroyed. Um, what you can do is bring them down on the flank of an attack. So if you're attacking with other units, you can bring them down on a flank and they can just add support and they will just mutually support the units that they come in with. Um, they're, one of their advantages is that they're really welcome in any list, whether your army is uh, really heavily armoured, you've got loads of guys in transports, loads of tanks, uh, you know, the Terminators kind of need to be killed by the same stuff as those tanks, so, or, or, and are quite resilient to Dakar, so they fit in nicely with that list. You've got a heavy infantry list, you know, lots of infantry, not much to little or no armour, and again, uh, they are infantry units that would, you know, just have a bit more toughness to them. So again, they fit into that list. Um, and you know, against manoeuvrable, in, in manoeuvrable lists, you know, they can add, they can deep strike wherever you want, so they can fit in with the manoeuvrability of your army. And they can also add that sort of anchor point to your manoeuvrable list. So you've got a little bit of a tough area of the battlefield and you're not just going to get pushed around uh, and sort of manoeuv your manoeuvrability will have some resilience backing it up. Um, so they're really another advantage that they're a really key unit in a list when you've got an army that has a lot of units with specialized roles. So often with Blood Angels or Space Marines, you'll have 
a variety of units that do specific jobs and are very good. You know, you've got very good at anti-tank units, you've got very good combat units, this, that, and the other. Uh, and you've got your middle of the road jack of all trade units as well. And the the Terminators really fit into that slot. So they really are a jack of all trades unit that will back up a variety of other units, but they're not specifically really, really good at everything. They're just good at everything. Um, and sort of moving on from this, what this allows you to do is it allows you to bully most units on the battlefield. So unless the unit is really uh, close combat specialised or really shooting specialised, you'll be able to get into a firefight with it and overwhelm it, especially with the recent beta update uh, to the Bolter rule, which allows you to use Terminators to rapid fire all the time. They can just always rapid fire now, even if they move. Um, but you'll be able to get into a long range firefight and bully most you know, infantry units and beat them unless they're really, really good shooting units. And likewise, uh, you'll be able to get into combat with most infantry units or vehicles and give them a bloody nose or destroy them uh, and, uh, you know, bully them, so to speak, unless they're really, really specialised in close combat. And if those units are really, really specialised in shooting or close combat, the Terminators can still, you know, they're tough enough to hang in there for a couple of turns. So if you need to get those Terminators in there, sort of hold a unit in place or occupy a really deadly enemy close combat unit, they'll be able to hang in there and just not get totally wiped out, hopefully, if they've got support. Uh, for a couple of turns so you can bring in more forces and you know overwhelm the enemy and destroy them if that's what you've got to do um so th they've got that toughness that they can hang in there uh, again against in a shooty firefight so if you've got to just occupy and get into a little bit of firefight on um, one sort of edge of the sort of main action for a turn and those termies are just getting into the firefight with the major unit and no need to really get involved you know they're tough enough to hang in there so your units can do what they've got to do and then bring in support to the tournaments later on in the game. So, you know, they can just really help you plug the gap in a variety of areas in your battlefield and a variety of situations, and they are just so versatile. Uh, and so many units combine beautifully, beautifully with these assault terminators, whether that's tactical marines, you know, weighing in with extra bolter fire, or whether it's in close combat because, you know, they've got power fists and that power sword generally on the sergeant. And they combine beautifully with assault terminators because having the extra five terminator models, even though they don't have the storm shields, these assault terminators will absorb a lot of fire and these guys will be able to come in and what the, ter the assault terminators that have died and you've lost their thunder hammer attacks, these guys will weigh in with their power fists and bring in that extra wallop that you've lost. And they probably won't take much fire. The tactical terminators won't take much fire because they'll focus in on the storm shields because they are the bigger threat. You've still got D3 wounds with those power fists. You're still going to hit a lot, do a lot of damage. And if you've got two units of the terminators, one assault termi, one tactical termi unit, working in combination, you're just going to be battering units in close combat and the tactical terminators can still strafe up units and add to the sort of wider firefight that's going on in uh, in the battlefield. Um, they can have a good crack at basically any unit. So it doesn't matter if the units, as I've discussed, they, you know, they can get into close combat and survive long enough to be reinforced or you know get into a firefight and survive long enough to be reinforced. But they can also have a good crack at anything and generally have a good chance of blowing it up, whether that be a tank. Uh, you know, they've all got two attacks each. Sergeant's got three attacks uh, with a power sword, so he's hitting on threes. Um, and hopefully you'll have some re-rolls in there. Uh, and because, again, not only do they combine beautifully with a variety of units, they also are not fussy at all about their character support. So you'll often have a chaplain, you know, in the battlefield, if not two, but they may be helping your assault termies, they may be helping your death company, and those guys may be operating nowhere near these assault terminators because these assault terminators, you've decided to deep strike them in to help reinforce an objective in the midfield that some of your tactical marines have taken or something like that. So whatever the situation is, you know, these guys, if there's whatever character nearby, if you've got a captain, 
that's going to give them those re-roll, re-roll ones to hit in the shooting phase and close combat. So they've got those buffs. They're not bothered about having a chaplain just reinforcing them in the close combat phase because they are a mixed unit. So, you know, both both a chaplain or a captain benefit. Likewise, you know, any sergeants, uh, sorry, lieutenants nearby are going to be benefiting them as well. So they're really not fussy about any support characters. And that goes for psychers as well. You know, it's always a viable target to give these guys extra attacks with a psyker. Um, so, you know, they're just really not fussy about the character support that uh, they're around and they're always going to benefit from a character nearby and, you know, bring in some extra damage to the firefight and be very reliable with that little bit of character support, either reroll wants to wound, reroll wants to hit or reroll all hits in close combat. You know, they're always, or, you know, some extra attacks from, a, you know, a cycle or something like that. They're always going to be a reliable unit with that little bit of buff that's always going to be around them. So they're just really, really versatile, really, really useful. And if you're using them correctly, you'll find that whatever situation you put them in, they will just add uh, a sort of force multiplying factor to your army and whatever sort of objective you're trying to complete in terms of your strategy, whatever tactics you're trying to implement on the battlefield, you know, they can always be helped by a unit of tactical terminators. So now that I've said all of this, it seems like Terminators are the best thing since sliced bread. Why don't we all have Terminators in all of our lists all of the time? Well, it's because I think of a problem with perspective. In the 40k world, we constantly compare units by what they can do on their own. This versus this. This can do this. And this unit is better at doing this. But... The problem is that in a 40k battle, nothing really works if it just operates on its own or you get army lists that are very one dimensional because it's just like four riptides or something like that, because they are able to just do anything independently. Um, And everyone wants units that can do that. But what we really need to do is we need to change our perspective uh, because it's not the Terminators that are letting us down. It's us that are letting the Terminators down because we're not... Uh, accepting the fact that they are inherently a combined forces unit. Um, So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to to teach you very quickly how to use the Terminators in such a way that they can really uh, change the tide of the battle for you and make sure that you win uh, games uh, because of the Terminators, not in spite of taking them in your list. So the key here is to really take the two inherent perceived weaknesses of the Terminators and play them to your advantage so they become strengths. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, the Terminators, as we've said, they don't really have the momentum to really take a unit on single-handedly or clear an objective single-handedly or something like that because they just don't have the damage output to just wipe out a unit and move on. But... They are really good at helping other units maintain their momentum. The other thing is that because they aren't killy enough to really, you know, threaten the enemy compared to some of your other units on the battlefield, in many ways they aren't worth the effort from your opponent's perspective of investing as much firepower as it takes to wipe out uh, this unit of Terminators. So they're not going to use their best units to take on this unit unit of Terminators. They'll try and take take them out. But invariably, uh, unless they really focus on them, the attack will bounce off uh, and it will be a waste of firepower. And the Terminators have almost siphoned off firepower from your other units because really your opponent should have just focused everything on the other units and not bothered with the Terminators. If they're not going to focus on them enough to get rid of them, they shouldn't bother with them at all. But they should, hopefully, uh, if you play the Terminators right, you know, siphon off some of that attack uh, to try and get rid of the Terminators, try and shift them, uh, but they won't invest enough and that will be wasted energy and a waste of time. And ultimately, you've, as I've said, helped uh, your other units maintain their momentum. So you've done that in two ways. You've done it by uh, helping drive units with their attack, by shooting and, you know, sort of giving a bit of supporting fire and charging in and giving some extra attacks with power fists and uh, a power sword. And you're also taking a little bit of fire in return, but, you know, and that's drawing fire away from your main units. Uh, So how can you sort of use this 
on the battlefield guy because that's what you want to be doing that's your sort of the idea you want to keep in mind your ethos with your terminators uh, but how can you use this specifically well i'll give you a couple of strategies now that you can use in your games to start using these terminators straight away to start getting some victories uh, in your games of 40k so the first thing i'd recommend doing is deep striking the terminators amongst your lines during a push so when you've got other units, say you're taking a heavy assault force um, and you've got other units uh, ready to make a push on the enemy lines and attack simultaneously, I would deep strike my terminators down amongst the middle of these units, nine inches away, just over nine inches away from your opponent's lines. Now, maybe these terminators will get in and brilliant, they're attacking from the first, first, uh, first go, so to speak. But uh, there's a good chance that they'll fail. And I wouldn't even bother investing uh, a command point on rerolling the dice unless you really need them to get in there you shouldn't really need to, them to get in there unless you know you've been really unlucky and loads of your other charges have failed um, and then you know more than likely they'll just sit there for a turn and your opponent will you know you'll do your assault you'll do some damage push your units and uh, opponent's units back and then they will have their turn and they may counter assault may well counter assault and they will start hitting your assault units and possibly with close range rapid fire special weaponry and that can tear through your armor um, or possibly high damage weapons or possibly counter assault units you know their close combat units that they've got ready and they're gonna strike and counter assault you but either way they will have invested units into that area of the battlefield and this is where your terminators come in beautifully because there's a chance that that is where your attack would falter. That is sort of often the case with assault-based armies. Your uh, attack hits the enemy, then they hit you back hard enough to uh, stop your momentum, stop you in your tracks, and then it just turns into a bit of a grind, and you may win, you may lose, but you've lost the momentum of the attack. But because you've got these terminators there, uh, you know, in your third turn or in your next turn, you march them up, uh, five inches, uh, maybe a little different depending on you know whether you've taken Tartarus or whatever, but you move them up a little bit, they can start spraying in, uh, shooting up units, whatever, just adding to the general weight of firepower uh, on the battlefield in that area. And remember, because of this beta rule at the moment, uh, hopefully you'll be getting uh, rapid fire at any range, up to 24 inches, and they, they can really affect a lot of things in the battlefield, really support in a lot of areas, quite a broad uh, circumference on the battlefield. Um, but then they can also charge in and take on these counter assault units and beat them up in close combat. And remember, you've, you you know you'll have a a character in there, buff character in there, because you've got your other assault units in there anyway. So they will benefit from that buff character. They don't need any further investment in points when you're building your list in the first place. They're just there. Uh, so you know you and you will help counter counter assault your opponent and keep that push free up your attacking units, be able to reposition and carry on striking at the opponent and fracturing their forces and destroying them, picking them off and bullying them and doing all of the things that I mentioned before um, in the video. So that's one sort of specific way to use them. That's really, really effective. I cannot underline enough just deep striking them in the midst of your forces so that they don't really take any firepower. They're just generally ignored because there's loads more threats around them and then they can just come in and reinforce and keep that momentum going. Uh, now, the other thing I would re recommend with them is sort of a later game strategy. Uh, something you can do, you can sort of switch tactics with your Terminators. And what I'd recommend doing is sort of, or you can just deep strike in and sort of have this as your strategy from the start, because, you know, depending on who you're playing against, what the mission is and that kind of thing. But what Terminators can also do is they can really create an anchor position on the battlefield and again you're going to play to that idea that the opponent won't focus enough firepower on the termies because there's other bigger threats going on that are really in their face what you'll do is you'll place these terminators you know in a bit of cover uh, on or near an objective in the sort of midfield somewhere where you want to hold position and have an anchor now uh, because you'll have they won't be taking part in the main attack or if you're doing it in the late game because the battle sort of fractures and you've got different various actions going on around uh, the table. Uh, these termies won't take 
you know, generally a big focus of firepower because your opponent will have to be dealing with other things on the battlefield. But they will want to shift these guys because they're on an objective, you know, and they're in the midfield and they'll be shooting away, plinking away, killing a couple of units off here and there. And, you know, they're in range, threat range. They, you know, they can always move out and charge something if the enemy gets too close. You know, they're present, they're there, they've got board control and they need to be removed. But what your opponent do is they will do is they will just invest their spare forces against the Terminators because your Terminators are the top priority. They won't use their top priority units against them. They'll use their other spare forces. You know what I mean? When you've got a list, in certain turns, you'll have your main units that just absolutely have to get something done. And then you've got your other sort of spare units that it doesn't really matter what you do with them for that turn. You're just going to help do other bits or maybe do something here or there. It just depends on the game. And those spare units inevitably will not be able to shift the Terminators because Terminators are Terminators. You know, two up save, in cover, General Dacker is not going to shift them. If you get a one on your armor save, you can always use command point to just re-roll that. You know, that's not an, a bad re-roll even when you've got other more important stuff going on because it just keeps those Terminators in place. And it's sort of that playing on that strip, that uh, idea that the Terminators almost have one foot on either side of the fence. They're not super elite, but they're certainly not run-of-the-mill, just standard line units. So when the opponent sort of tries to send one or two run-of-the-mill, maybe even three standard uh, battle line units against the Terminators to try and shift them off an objective or in cover near an objective, the units will bounce off. You know, the firepower will bounce off. They might charge in a unit. That will bounce off too. The Terminators can punch them in close combat. They may not want to charge in because they know, from an neck, fourth, uh, you know, power fists and a power sword is really going to give me problems. So I don't want to charge them in. So your Terminators are just going to sit there as an anchor point. Um, and not really be able to be shifted. And if your opponent says, right, I'm going to shift those Terminators and really focus in on them and dedicate enough firepower to shift, you know, Terminators off an objective or in cover, you know, whatever, then they're really taking a massive focus away from your other units and really freeing up your other units and giving them a bit of breathing room so your other main actions can regain momentum if they're faltering or really, you know, uh, deliver a coup de grace and end the game, you know, really chop up some units. Because as we know, with our super elite forces, if they're given breathing room for a second, we can really strike at the enemy and, you know, close the game very quickly. So that is essentially what you're doing with your Terminators. You're not using them. You're acknowledging the fact that the Terminators are not going to win games for you with these game-changing maneuvers, seizing objectives or that kind of, you know, wiping out a key enemy unit necessarily single-handedly uh, in an amazing cinematic action. They're not necessarily going to do that. Well, they're not going to do that for you anymore. You shouldn't be playing them that way on any level. What they are going to do is they are going to sit there as a tough, reliable anchor point to your main battle lines. They are going to provide a real threat and a real uh, a decent amount of reinforcing firepower and reinforcing assault ability to whatever you've got on, on the battlefield. So they should never be your main uh, unit. You've got your other main units and you use your Terminators um, to back up whatever else you want to do on the battlefield. Uh, because again, as soon as they become the main threat, you know, the, your opponent may well focus in on them. And again, if you really want to, you can start pushing those Terminators up. If you need to take a focus off some of your other units, you can sort of do a bit of a, a bait and switch, do a bit of a, a jab with your Terminators and sort of push them out of cover, assault a nearby unit or shoot them, make, you know, make a good go of an assault at a nearby unit. Your opponent will think, oh God, I've got those Terminators coming at me now as well. They'll focus on firepower on them even more so than they would have done in previous turns. Maybe enough to wipe them out or maybe not because they still have your other units to deal with. But either way, that will absolutely guarantee that your your Terminators will absorb more firepower for that turn as soon as you run them out of cover as bait and therefore give your other units breathing room. So that's how to use Terminators. I hope you have fun with them. Dust off your old models or you know invest in a unit today. 
There's some beautiful models out there, especially the Horace Heresy ones. Cannot recommend them enough. So thank you very much for your time. This has been the Scholar Progenium. Goodbye.